What's good, YouTube family? This your God bless one. Thank you for watching another episode of I Smoke Hip Hop. Rest in peace to the legendary John Singleton. Like, I didn't want to do the video yesterday because I was going through a whole lot. But I mean, I've been seeing for days now, and pretty much you guys as well, how they talked about him being on life support and all this extra. So I kind of like had bad feelings from the get go right then and there. Now, there's already people in conspiracy saying he was killed versus, you know, this and that. To be honest with you guys, I'm not going to say it like the Nipsey Hustle way where I was like, nah, he didn't die from this. He didn't die. You know what? We never know. He could have possibly been um, poisoned or something like that through the industries itself. Because as you can see in the title, John Singleton always made sure it was his adamant mission to keep Hollywood, I mean hip-hop, connected with Hollywood. The man literally brought the culture of hip-hop into the Hollywood world, and he doesn't get a lot of recognitions that he um, deservingly so um, was supposed to get. As far as... Um, Boys in the Hood, he done a lot of other prominent things other than just giving us movies. Do people know about the connections he made to get other directors to get certain movies and, and recognitions for that too from the Hugh brothers? And y'all know them two twins with Tupac, so-called handle. But uh, many other directors that he did co consulting work for, certain movie sets where his name didn't really get any type of fame or he didn't get, get and maybe it wasn't the credits and titles, I'm not sure, but he didn't really get the proper credits from the people people that he deserved. Everybody say John Singleton name and just keep saying boys in the hood. Just like when, when he did, when John Singleton gave us baby boy, I remember, I'm sorry, I got a lot of bees following me. I'm so, hang on. I'm running from, it's like bee season over here. Okay, John Singleton, man, I don't think a lot of people understand. This dude did baby boy. When he did baby boy, that was one of the best movies that came out in a while. I remember that I was a freshman in high school or sophomore, I think freshman. Or maybe sophomore, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. But this dude, man, came out with the banger during the time where I didn't even go to movie theaters like that, if at all. I went, like, I was not a movie theater person. I'm a movie person, but I didn't grow up with funds and money and being able to go to movie theaters almost my whole life until I got a little bit older. So uh, that was not the norm for me. But when I actually went to that theater, it kind of got me hypnotized to going to the movies because here you have a great director such as John Singleton, and here is the most ghettoest film that you could find, and you're thinking, huh? It's allowed to be played on the screens like that? I'm going to be honest with you. He gave me possibilities that I can reach that I thought that was impossible. That's what John Singleton did for me. If you're a young creator, then you know exactly what I'm speaking about. You ever see somebody and you see their works and what they bring into the forefront. And that work magnifies you and motivates you to be somebody that you're not even... Uh, motivated enough to be so basically you're getting the motivation from that person to aspire and reach for your dreams and goals that's what John Singleton did for me I don't tell many people that I used to write um, poetry um, or whatever and poems or whatever about surviving and succeeding the plight of um, young black people and all that or just how the world need to be a better place and it was his movies that inspired that like Boys in the Hood is my all-time favorite movies but for not what people are, are enjoying it for like if you come from hoods that act like the hoods that i come from then you know when you see a movie like boys in the hood it hypnotize you it hypnotize you because you go man that's exactly how outside is that's exactly how my neighborhoods is you walk into the corner store you're only like six seven years old because your parents trust you everybody in that neighborhood is a community but it's still dangerous as hell you walk into the corner store you see the cops in the ambulance over here. You see some dude you just knew at the basketball court. You was just playing ball with his big brothers. I mean, um, with his little brothers. And you see the big brother dead in front of the store. Things like that. Like, that was on a daily basis type stuff. Or high-speed chases in our neighborhood in residential areas where the cops shouldn't be escalating their speed limits like that but you know they don't give a damn about the hood dudes going like 70 to 80 if not more miles per hour chasing this cat and you got all maybe if you stop chasing him he can get navigate his ass out the damn neighborhood first and then you guys can go on his pursuit but you know they don't care about the hood like that so when you're watching all these things going on in the movies of john singleton he made sure it was a virtue essence to put and incorporate all the real facts of life what goes on in the hood to that movie 
So John Singleton, if he don't get his proper flowers, is it goes back to what I'm saying. We don't give any of these individuals their flowers while they're living. We like chastising people. We like only giving flowers and producing these works when these dudes have then passed away. But what do you say about them when they're alive? That's that. That's the thing I really want to know. What do we say about these individuals when they're alive? That's what that will be more grateful and showing more gratitude if we could do that for them and give them their flowers while they're alive. To do this when somebody has died is I don't know, man. And I feel like I going back to earlier about the conspiracy thing. I remember he warned us about the Tupac movie. To this day, on my kids' life, I put that on everything I love to tell y'all. I have barely watched any Tupac trailers, and for one damn thing to make perfectly um, sure, I've never watched the Tupac movie yet, y'all. I can't. From everybody from Tupac's stepbrothers to his real families to his blood families to his cousins, homies, friends, all have been warning us for years not to watch the Tupac movie even before it was in production. To you young heads, they've been trying to make a Tupac movie going back all the way when I was in middle school, in fact, MTV, or I think it was VH1, they did produce a Tupac movie like back in 2001 or 2002. A lot of y'all probably forgot that. I forgot during what time when they had produced the movie, but go check that out if y'all think I'm making that up. Um, it, was a, it was a scene about him and MC Hammer or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But they produced a movie like that before, and Tupac mom went crazy. Rest in peace, Afini Shakur. She went crazy and warned everybody about the works of these devils and how they move and when i say devil a devil could be black white whatever i'm not making it a race thing i mean, I mean evil entities of people who are using somebody's plight to um exploit it and get their own revenues and com compensations out of this but um she been warned us about the movies they're trying to make and produce and rest in peace of john singleton there's been no more advocate more than john singleton who's been warning you guys about the people involved making these movies for these people, man. John Singleton warned each and every single one of us about it. And niggas still went to the movies in the droves to watch that movie. And, and then I didn't feel sorry for any of them where everybody like, oh, the movie was disappointing. It was a failure. Of course it was. It was not even the real timeline of Tupac who he was. Of course it was. It was not. People going to be like, how do you know if you didn't see the movie? I don't have to see a movie if I know the works of the directors that was involved, the producers that was involved, some of the actors that was involved, and all the things that the people stated and said already. So it's like, why, why would I need to see a movie where it's the type of people that I believe in as far as their taste in movies who have told me it was a failure, then they led me to be right all along, and I'm not going to waste my time to support that. If Tupac was alive, he'll, he'll be rolling, well, even in his graves right now, he's spiritually rolling in his graves right now. And I know he's spiritually hurting that we didn't support John Singleton the way we should have, including myself. Um, I, I fell off from John Singleton for a while now because I got older bills and I'm using excuses. But when life hits you hard, we sometimes forget about the people who motivate us, which is wrong. And that's what I mean by the legacy of black people don't really transcend and go far. With the whole Nipsey Hussle thing, let's see how far, how people can remember his situation and his plight and what's going on. Man, with that being said, man, I'm your God blessed one, man. Love your family, love your kids, and stay blessed. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe.